Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the match preview. Everton versus Crystal Palace Saturday, 3 o'clock at Goodison Park. Again, the Toffees have to win, Jack. Big, big game. Big game for both sides. Mm. Obviously, Palace haven't started the season well either, but looking at it from an Everton perspective, obviously, it's a home game. Mm. It's a winnable game. It's a game we need to win. It's really big. It's big for us. It's big for the manager. And look, a lot of talk this week about the manager's future at the football club with all the takeover news, obviously. But regardless of what happens in the future, he's the manager at the weekend. So he needs a result for him and himself for any chance of, of his job and for what comes after that as well. And he's Everton manager, so he needs to win games while he's at Everton, doesn't he? So benefits absolutely everyone at Everton, obviously, if we get the three points on Saturday. But we need to show something we've not shown in our previous few games. Mm. No, I think you're right. I think throwing the points away last week, like we did against Leicester, that game should have been sewn up. Villa, we threw a two-goal lead away. Bournemouth at home, the game was won. Should have been four, five, six, seven before they even had the shot. Um, and it wasn't, and we lost the game. But we're playing a team that hasn't won a game either, although Palace had through the last three. Um, it'll be the first time since 2021 they've drawn four on the run if they get a draw at the weekend. But they're looking for their first win as well. Obviously, still missing Elise, who's had a great start to life in Germany, hasn't he, with Bayern. He was a huge loss for them in the summer. But Evan have got to take advantage of this right now. Palace aren't playing great. They're not, you know, free-flowing. They do carry threats. We'll look at that threat in a minute, what we've identified. But for us, this is as close to a, a, a must-win and a game, a really good fixture for us because, like I say, Palace aren't arriving at Goodison flying. They're arriving in, sim, you know, but they just haven't won like we, mm. you know, like us. And Everton's record against them, I think, it's one defeat in 19 against Crystal Palace. And that was when Benitez was the manager. So we've, it's a team we've done okay against generally. And we've got to continue that on Saturday. And you're absolutely right. The manager needs a victory. All the excuses are, are getting, you know, people are listening less and less now to the excuses. Just got to get a win and just pick everybody up and calm everything down. Yeah, and not only are people listening less to the excuses, the excuses are running out. Mm. You mentioned players being missing. There's yeah. players that will hopefully be back, which we can get into. There's, he's mentioned the ownership situation and, oh, what this club's been like. That's all getting sorted, so yeah. that pressure, although it shouldn't really be affecting them all that much. If it was, that's going away. Mm. We just need to win now, don't we? We've shown that we can get ourselves in a position to win a game. Mm. We've just not shown that we can win a game. <laughs> so that's what we need to show. And he needs to show some of that defensive stability that he's known for and that he says he brings to football clubs. And mm. obviously that we obviously have to take the lead in the first place as well. But we have been decent going forward this season. Even if we have wasted chances, we've been making chances. Mm. Players like Dwight McNeil have been making chances. Mm. And Dom's been in decent form over the last few games. So we just need to take it now. We just need to take it. And it is too early in the season to be talking about must wins. But when you look at the points that Everton have carelessly thrown away mm. and you look at the harder fixtures Everton have coming up, Unless you want your games against the top, top clubs to be must-win games, mm. which is an unfair situation for any manager, you need to win your winnable games, and this is one of them. Definitely, and, you know, you just talked about us attacking, like Dwight McNeil's created more chances than anyone so far this season, particularly coming from playing in that number 10 position, where I think, to me, is his only real place in this Everton side. I don't think he's quick enough to play wide, but he in that central area, obviously Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the start of the season really well. Got a couple of goals as well so far. So Everton will be looking to build on that. Um, that's for sure this weekend. I think moving, you just talked about, you know, getting players back. One player who we expect to be back at the weekend is Jared Brantwaite. Mm -hmm. He played 90 minutes for the 21s last week. He's trained all week. So, you know, the manager does expect them back. Do you expect Brantwaite to come straight back into the side alongside James Tarkovsky? He absolutely has to, doesn't he? Yeah. He had, it, there's no excuse for him not to, for the mm. start. He's had 90 minutes and mm. he's done a full week of training. And I know the manager said, you know, the hardest part is getting that match fitness. Mm. But you only get that by playing matches. Definitely. And it's not like, you know, we're, we're out of the cup. <laughs> so there's no lower stakes games where you can rotate mm. a little bit and change them and give a player minutes who needs them. Yeah. He can't get minutes until he gets minutes. So if he's fit and available and he's trained, he has to play at the weekend. And it's it's about getting him back in the team. And the manager has bemoaned his absence and said mm -hmm. that's part of why he was struggling. 
the fact that we're so reliant on him in the first place is worrying, but mm. nevertheless, it's where we seem to be. But we have to break up that partnership of Keane and Tarkowski, not simply because of Michael Keane's individual performances. I don't think he's necessarily mm. been terrible, but those two as a partnership, there's very little stability there, no. and there's very little understanding there. Mm. We know Tarki and Bramthwaite complement each other very well. We know defensively we're a much better side with Bramthwaite in the team. So unless he's got injured again today, mm. there is no universe in existence where he shouldn't start at the weekend for me. Let's have a look at Everton's team from the last game last week at Leicester City. This is how the trophies lined up. Uh, obviously, Jordan Pickford, and goalie at James Garner, Tarkovsky, Keane, and Ashley Younger, left back, Oral Mangala, Abdelaide Kore in midfield, and then ahead of them, he had Jesper Lindstrom, Dwight McNeil, Illiman, and Jai, and Dominic Calvert Loon. From that team, obviously, right back, uh, Michalenko's trained and is fit, so Michalenko will come back in, even though I actually thought Ashley Young played really well last week. Michalenko will be back in because of the left foot and the balance. There's a big circle over at right back. Patterson played an hour last week, but the manager said in his press conference he's not ready yet to go straight back into the side. So therefore, who are we expecting at right back? Is it Ashley Young or is it James Garner? Who, who do you think it'll be? It's a difficult one because I don't see him starting James Garner in midfield with the options we've got there, okay. with the two who plays at Leicester and mm -hmm. done well and Irabunum and Garner Gay might be back in contention, mm. although the manager said he's not been training. So I don't see Garner starting in midfield, but we mm. know he likes Garner. So you might put him in at right back just to have him in the team. Okay. But I wouldn't be shocked to see Ashley Young, to be honest. Because mm. he did have a decent game at Leicester, mm. it's got to be said. He's done very well. For he's our better goal. at left back rather than right back, though, isn't he? Mm. If that makes it, it's a strange one, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, listen, to this Garner Gay will have had two full days training. He's a fit fella anyway. Whether that's enough to get him back in the starting lineup, I don't know. But at least the manager will have options off the bench as well. Um, and it will be interesting. I thought the core had done all right at Leicester last week. Mangala, certainly, he's been involved in three Everton matches. Last Saturday was his best performance so far. How does he make that midfield up? Irabunum has been arguably Everton's best player this season up there with NGI and was out the team last week. So does he come back in because it's a home game? These are the decisions they're going to have to make. It's vital to get that midfield right though because obviously mm. Palace have got a decent midfield as well like some Wharton in there and so you know but we've got an opportunity on Saturday I think the two wide men I think he has to leave alone I think Lindstrom albeit he's missed a couple of sitters in the last two games he's looking better with each game he's growing into and, the team and I yeah. think he gives us something and I think on the other side and Jai is obviously Everton's most dangerous player because he runs and commits defenders and he means people double up on him, which therefore opens up space mm. for them. So, I mean, would you do anything with the two wingers or would you keep them as well? No, absolutely not. I'd leave it as it is. The okay. And Jai speaks for itself. He's yeah. playing really well. McNeil is obviously doing better yeah. in the number 10 role and, yeah. and making chances. And it's mm. a role that hides his limitations. And Lindstrom is one where I do think we have to keep giving him time and keep giving him minutes because mm. he is improving every game. There's mm. still issues, obviously. He's still missed a couple of chances. But he's getting but his it. influence in the game's mm. growing, isn't it? And he's, like you say, he's getting into those positions mm. in the first place. So, he is when we brought him in knowing he needed minutes he's mm. not had them at Napoli he had a tough time over there yeah, so he we've not got the fitness or the sharpness or the confidence mm. so he does need that time but I think if you've got a player who is improving slightly every game you keep playing them don't you because you keep you hope mm. he'll keep improving but I think I think he's one of them players to me that he looks like he'll score goals so I think the first one will lift him he should have scored at Leicester last week he missed a really good chance early on but he's getting into those mm. positions and I think Jack Harrison, I have no issue with Jack. I think he works his socks off for you. I, I, I think he's better off the left, but mm. the managers used him on the right because we haven't had anyone to play there. But I don't think he gets in quite as good attacking positions inside the penalty area the way Lindstrom does. So I am with you. I think I'd leave Jesper Lindstrom in there just to give us that attacking option. And obviously Palace don't know his game. He's relatively new to the league and all that, so I think he could give you know them a few headaches because they're not sure of, of what he does and you know the the kind of moves he makes, whatever. So and obviously Dominic Calvert is playing really well up front. I think let's have a look at Crystal Palace that, uh, last time they were out. This was their lineup. We see Henderson in goal. They're the back three of Lacro, Gay, and Richards. Richards. He then add uh, Munoz and Mitchell as their wing backs. Walton. 
Daichi Kamada, who's been a little bit hit and miss at the moment. But obviously the front three, they've got Enketia, they've got Eze, and they've got John Philippe Mateta. Boom, boom, boom. Mateta's, Mateta's in, the room. in the room. Um, there as well, and obviously them front three can cause a problem for any team, can't they? And yeah. Everton are going to have to be right at it at the weekend. It's the one, like last season, I think we'd get away with uh, we wouldn't be as worried because defensively we were so much better. But this season, we just seem to be throwing goals away. So we're going to have to, and hopefully Brantwaite will, will help this, we're going to have to be really tight because them three can cause you problems, can't they? Yeah, and they're all different players as well. But, you know, in the early games they've played together, seem to complement each other. Mm -hmm. the Teter, obviously, with his physicality mm -hmm. and real handful for defenders and a decent finisher as well. As I used this brilliant dribbler who's mm. fast, who's very dangerous one on one, and gave us some problems last season when we played Crystal Palace when he was getting one on one. And then in Ketier, who's playing a little bit deeper than he might usually, but he yeah, wasn't yeah. off the striker, mm. and that allows him to get into spaces. They will require a lot of attention, and because they all have different skill sets, you need the right makeup of players in your defence and your midfield to be able to contain them. Mm, definitely. I mean, Everton are going to have to. They're going to have to, if they take the lead, learn how to see games out. No other Premier League teams drop more points than Everton from winning positions this season, which is obviously a huge, huge worry for us. And, you know, we're going to have to take the chances. I mean, this is Crystal Palace's first trip outside of London for a Premier League game this season, which is uh, an interesting stat as well. You just mentioned them there. The player we've decided is the danger man for this game is Ebrici Eze, you know, tremendous footballer. Let's have a look at his numbers. He's played five games so far this season. Just got the one goal. That was a great goal at Stamford Bridge, actually, as Palace got a draw at Chelsea from an XC of 2.06. Zero assists. And he's only created one big chance so far. There's his heat map. This Saturday at 3 o'clock, Everton play Crystal Palace in the Premier League at Goodison Park. Everton and Crystal Palace are two of the six teams that are yet to win a game in the league this season. The two teams have met 30 times in the Premier League, Everton have won 14, they've lost 6 and they've drawn 10 times. Palace currently sit 15th, they lost their opening two games but they've drawn the last three, henceforth they have three points. Everton sit 19th, they lost the first four games and they've drawn the last game 1-1 against Leicester. Calvert-Lewin is Everton's top scorer with two goals this season. Crystal Palace's top scorer is John Philippe Mateta, who also has two goals. But he is a player who, he's been involved, no player's been involved in more um, of their team's shot-creating actions. So he's had 20 shots himself, I think, and created 10 mm -hmm. other shots for, for someone, you know, other players in his team. He is a player who... He can just produce something out of nothing, can he? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, his heat map there, I think that suggests mm. that this season his role has changed ever mm. so slightly because in the past he has been more of a creator, whereas now obviously you look at his XG, got a decent XG over a couple of games, although he's underperforming at the moment. But then you yeah. look at his heat map and... Obviously, in the lineup, he's more central, but he has the freedom to go down the left, especially because they aren't playing with a natural winger in mm. that side as well, because they've got the wing backs. And yeah, very talented player, very dangerous, mm. very dangerous one on one. And he is the one in the absence of Elise that has been asked to step up, and he's still very important in that Crystal Palace side. And I'm mm. sure he's looking for that moment almost to solidify that. Obviously, he's had the goal at Chelsea as well, but he wants those continuously now. He wants mm. those moments. You say, look, doesn't matter that Elise has gone and Zaha left before him. Mm. I'm still here, and I I'm can provide man. the goals. Yeah, definitely. They're a dangerous side. They've got a good coach in Oliver Glasner. They are a dangerous team, but the one that Everton have generally done very well against. And, you know, we've got to do that again at the weekend. Obviously, use the uh, the positivity of the, the, the freaking group, the takeover being sorted out. That's a huge positive, a huge plus. And a penny for John Texter's thoughts going into this one. Obviously, had he have won the, uh, you know, the ownership battle, who knows, you know, he's very vocal about his admiration for Everton Football Club and it's a bit of a strange one. The text of Derby. Uh, Everton have lost their opening two Premier League home games. Only in Everton's history has it happened three other times that we've uh, we've lost. Or four, is it? Everton have lost 
only four times in our history have we ever lost the first three home games in the season. So let's not make let's it not five. make it five this weekend. But it is there's a there's a little bit of an edge to it. Both teams needing and wanting that first victory of the season and listen, it'd be a, it'd be great if Everton were to win, they'd go actually above Crystal Palace in the table. So got an opportunity to to register our first win. It will be a tough game, Palace. I've got some really good players. And of course, they go to Chelsea and get a draw there, didn't they? So then you know, they're not a team that are easily beaten through with Manchester United last week as well. So a big game, one we hope Everton can get over the line and let us know what you think in the comments section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. See you later.